Hello, this is Roland. Today I want to talk about um, wholeness again. I made a video a couple of days ago about wholeness. And I said that our entire being, mind, body, soul, emotions, should be in accord, should all be on the same page. Okay. The hierarchy of uh, authority is God, then Jesus, then the soul, then the mind and body. Okay. Now, if all is of one accord, all are working together, every cell, every system, every organ, all working toward um, to do the will of God, then one's whole, one's whole being, including one's body, looks within for directions, for guidance, for wisdom, okay, when meeting um, events and exigencies and circumstances um, out in the world. Now, much of the wisdom of our body, you've heard the term wisdom of, the, of our body, is native. It is, our body has a native intelligence, knows how to do a lot of things, like heal a wound, for example. You get a little cut on your finger and people on it, it's healed. How does it do that? It's amazing. Okay? The body knows how to repair itself. It knows how to restore itself and refresh itself. Okay? A good night's sleep, you wake up in the morning fresh. The body knows how to do that. Okay? So it's, it's a native wisdom. It's given to us by God and, and it, des it's a, it descends from from God. He provides that he designed that into the body, that wisdom. Okay? Now, let's talk now about um, uh, all working together and all, and the body, see, just, see, you can think of the soul as the parent and the body as the, is the, uh, the child. Now, the body should be, re ought to respond to the soul. The body ought to look to the soul for wisdom, okay, for guidance, for light, see, for um, for love, spiritual love, for warmth. Now, if the soul, see, the so the soul should be a good is a, if if the soul is a good parent, if the soul is a wise king, you could also say that the, the soul is the king of the body or the queen of the body. If the soul is, is a wise and good king, a just king, a good, just queen of the body, then there is no reason for rebellion because it's a system of, of justice. Okay? Which is, these were some of the points I made in my last video, which, is, which was excellent, but I'm reiterating them now and laying some groundwork for what comes next. Now let's take a couple of, ex of examples of where the, uh, the, the body is not, is, uh, falls away from becomes separate from, becomes dissociated from the command, the central command structure, the wisdom, see, and the intelligence that flows from within, the, the, the how to handle the situation just right, see. When it falls away from that, when the cell, when a, a cell or a set of cells or a tissue or an organ fall away from that, then it begins to, re, to react on its own without the restraining, mitigating um, wisdom of the central command. Now let's take an example of, uh, just a typical example, where, um, uh, of allergy, let's take allergy for an example. Now, when the body becomes allergic to something, let's say it's something that's relatively, har that's perfectly harmless, like a piece of pollen, for example. Pollen, there's gazillions of, tons of pollen all around. They're, all, they're harmless. It's just, it's a plant um, from the plant, okay? Bees like pollen. They love pollen. And they use it to, to, uh, to, make, their, to make their honey, see? But, um, but let's say that the body, re for some reason, in a moment of shock, in a moment of shock, okay, a moment of trauma, that the body, a part of the body, 
a system of the body is temporarily di dissociated from the, the central command. And it, and it reacts to the presence of pollen. I remember um, when I was, uh, um, well, how old was I? 10, 11, maybe something like that. We went to San Francisco, and at that time, my mom had divorced my father, which is unfortunate. Um, she had uh, um, divorced my father, and then she was um, uh, went on a trip with this uh, other man, okay, Wh who turned out to be a very nice man, incidentally. He became my stepfather, and he was a, a good man, an honorable man, a decent man. So my father was a good guy, and then my stepdad was a good guy too. Okay, so maybe that's why I came out okay in the long run. I came out okay because I had, um, I had a good, uh, a good father. He had my f real father had, had issues. Okay, going back to his childhood and trauma and the war, he had issues, which he sadly was never able to overcome his issues. But he never took it took him out on me. He was always good good to me and kind, and he did the best he could. So I have a soft spot in my heart for my dad. But anyway, then um, my stepdad came along. So they went on a trip to San Francisco, and I went along, okay? But I remember that there was some kind of a huge argument between uh, my mom and the, the, who would become my step stepdad later. They had a, some kind of a tremendous there was something that happened. I don't know what it was. I don't even know if it was an argument, but there was some huge emotional trauma for my, for my mom. That much I remember. And lo and behold, my mom had never had allergies before. At, at this time, she was 30 something years old, never even one tiny allergy. And all of a sudden, right after that trip, she developed multitude of allergies and I suspect I you know I don't I'm speculating but I'm rather certain even though it's speculation that the the huge emotional trauma was the occasion of the shock and her body parts of her body then her him, her immune system began to re react to the uh, what was in the presence of it what was in the scene of that traumatic event and what was happened to be in the scene of that traumatic event was certain pollen. And from that day on, her body reacted. Now, when the body reacts, this is just an example. See, there's millions of examples, not just allergy, but all kinds of uh, examples of when the body is reacting, uh, which, which becomes dysfunctional. The, the pollen is harmless. It's not a real threat. But the but cells of the body, the, those particular structures or tissue or organs or systems of the body are responding as if it were a threat, so they overreact. And the overreaction, see, results in um, um, uh, toil and stress for the body. It's an unnecessary, it's a dysfunctional overreaction. Now, if the, if the, the, the cells had been, remained uh, subject to responding to the inner authority, then they would not have overreacted. But how did they become separate? It was in a moment of shock. They became dissociated, okay? So, but after that, they then continued to react, uh, overreact or react wildly. And uh, uh, the central command never did reestablish uh, control over th that, those aberrant reactions. So there was that, and then there were other ones. So you could you could also say that her emotional reaction in the first place was an overreaction. See, our emotions, techni technically, our emotions ought to be ought to be reserved for our Creator, responding to Him with love and with joy and with a higher high set, with a higher um, set of, e of emotions. Okay, love, gratitude, um, and so on. And then by loving our Creator and responding to Him, 
that would keep us from overreacting to the outside. We wouldn't overreact to people with anger, with frustration, see, with impatience. We, we would remain patient because of our fidelity and we wouldn't become fearful and um, all that sort of thing because we would remain faithful and, f and, uh, and, and have allegiance to the authority that comes from within and above, you see? So your, uh, my mom's um, weakness, her propensity to overreact, which she probably learned as a child from her, from her mother. She was separated from her ground of good when she was a little child by her mother who yelled and screamed at her and emotionalized her and so on. So she couldn't help herself. But I'm just using this as an, as an example. So you can see then that when, when we are reacting emotionally to the outside, it's, you could, you could, you could stay, say that the body is um, responding to an outside agency, to outside programming, see, to outside agenda, outside, see, Instead of the, the, the good, the, the, the uh, holistic uh, um, intelligence and direction from within, it's responding to the outside. Okay? It's reacting to the outside. It's taking its, uh, its pattern for, for future growth and development from the outside. So now you see that there, uh, so obviously there is a, a conflict there and there's a disconnect. So now, um, uh, so now you have, a, let's say you have a human being who is responding emotionally to outside people and circumstances, responding to ideas. See, Paul said, all, in the Bible it says, all that is not of faith is sin. See, can you see that now? Any reaction, see, any, any idea, any notion, see. That's why we must learn to meditate and observe our, our thoughts. Stand back and observe them so we can observe what's not a, pr a proper thought. And so we can observe it without reacting to it. See, the mystics talk about that. Madame Guyon, Francois Fen Fenlon, St. Francis de Sales, um, Teresa of Avila, Miguel Molinos, those kinds of people, they, they talk about n um, scanning. See, we ought to be scanning our thoughts constantly. So if you respond to some stray notion, become excited over it, or angered over it, or resentful over it, or see what I mean? You're responding to, su to, a, to some other agenda, some other idea, some other, see, intelligence, other than what would come wordlessly from, from within. So now you have a person who's responding to people, reacting to people on the outside, reacting to circumstance, reacting to the presence of other things, pollen and other things in the air, reacting, 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 okay? And now you have this, so now you see that the, the body begins to become out of control. It, instead of responding only to within and then, and then acting properly in accord with, with directions it's given from within, it's instead t responding to the outside. And separate from the mitigating, see, um, calming power of, from within begins to react wildly. So now the cells are on their own. There's the, the threat, what they perceive as a threat, the pollen or whatever it is, or some, uh, some occurrence on the outside. And the, you know how the body tends to go to extremes. See, if the body is supposed to be, uh, uh, in a st uh, for the most part, in a state of homeostasis, our systems are various chemicals in the, 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 the whole body. There's a certain balance there. So the body tends then to go to extremes and it tries to restore the center. By it swings too far one way and then what it does is it swings too far the other way to try to bring things back and you see how that happens. So then you have, th so the, the, these systems can become, um, um, you could say they're out of control. They've been shocked. They've been traumatized. Our systems can be traumatized by, uh, by ke um, toxic chemicals in the environment or by cruelty, injustice, by um, um, terrible happenings 
by other people's meanness or by a, be, a lie being betrayed. See, but our syst our systems can also be shocked when they start to overreact. So there's some little something in the environment to which it shouldn't be reacting in the first place, and then all of a sudden there's a big thing there, and now it reacts, oh, way overreacts, and the body can can sh can begin to lose it loses the center that way. See. So now you have different systems, different tissues, different organs reacting to the outside. You see the stress, you see the confusion, you see the lack of unit, the lack of wholeness. See, the lack of fidelity to, uh, to the, the center, to the good from within. And then other things like, like for example, um, our s system can get stuck, like something like dysautonomia, for example. You have a, some si sometimes the sympathetic nervous system um, reacts and uh, it and, and it is not downregulated by the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, so then you end up with certain symptoms. I'm just talking about the basic principle of parts of the body not falling away from the the calm, stabilizing central mission, if you want to put it that way, or not re being um, um, managed by the center for whatever reason. Now, these uh, ce cells or tissues become damaged through their overreaction. See? Plus, they can be converted over. See, what happens is that, that if, you, if, if a part of our body, see, if we react to the outside ineffectively, See, there's always a win or loss. There's always an exchange that occurs in every in every uh, encounter and reaction. So you know how it is. There's a, a if you have two pe two dogs that confront each other, one wins, one loses. The one that wins takes the energy of the one that loses. See, takes its energy. Can take its identity too. To the victor go the spoils. Okay. So when your body conf it, it confronts something on the outside if it doesn't re react properly. See? And this this uh, goes for any, it not only does it go for pollen and allergies and people on the outside and so on, but also it, it, it includes uh, uh, viruses and bacteria. Okay? And if your body does not respond dis with the perfect response, a decisive response, it responds, it loses, it reacts. In other words, it loses and then in the loss, the, the energy goes to the, um, to the victor. So by our improper reactions, often resentful ones, we give, we give power to the bacteria, to the germs, to whatever it is that we're reacting improperly to. So even other people, like some parents, for example, their, chi their child comes home, somehow changed by uh, some neighborhood good for nothing, to which this your your child now um, is respond react responding and, and 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 developing an allegiance for, and now they get all caught up. Your child gets all caught up with this neighborhood good for nothing, and now your child doesn't listen to you anymore. See, there's a change of allegiance. Now it, it call it calls for great wisdom, and strength, and resolve. See, and just a right and. And a calm response. No, see, that's what's called for to uh, help that child to um, to uh, until he comes back to his senses and, and no longer is completely loyal to this strange good neighborhood good for nothing that does weird things and with your child is all entranced. You see what I mean? But a lot of parents will overreact. They become emotional, hysterical, angry. See. And the parent becomes so rea re over emotional that they shock themselves. They may end up being the parent may end up being converted to the ver to the to the thing just like their their child. See. Then the parent throws in the towel, and then see, no longer serves as a, as a counterbalancing influence. The parent then goes along with whatever is wrong. See, so great calmness is re is required. But, but the other thing is parents 
when they overreact to their kids and just, you know, start yelling and screaming and, and so on and so forth, their overreaction, they're actually feeding the wrong in the child. They're giving their energy to it because their, their resistance is ineffective. So it's not based on love. It's not based on, on, a char on strength of character and resolve and uh, wisdom. It's based on anger and emotion. And see what I mean? So they give energy to it. They feed it. People feed a sickness. See? Other people feed this, your sickness by catering to it. And come, see, with the resistance that, that, that is not the proper resistance, if it's an effective resistance, then it actually gives, see, or throwing in the towel and going along with it, see, and submitting oneself to it. See, a lot of people, they're so used to losing because of their resentful resistance to things. They resent everything. They resent other people. They resent their illness. They resent their work. They resent everything. So they have resentful resistance to everything which defeats them and tires them and wears them out, and they lose, see. And so they end up um, afraid of resisting another round of painful, agonizing resistance and loss. So then they, they start throwing in the towel and submitting to everything. See, you see that. And you see that in society. You see as, for example, as America deteriorates. It's happened to Europe already. See, but as Amer what America was once the shining star of the world. See, now we're deteriorating. And as we deteriorate, notice how we begin to give power to the wrong, the worst music, see, the worst ideas, the, the worst entertainers, the lowest things are, are, are worshipped and held high and given, given our substance, our life, our money. We give power to them, see, because we, are, uh, we, be, we, 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 we throw in the towel because our resistance had, was ineffective. Well, all right, so I've uh, made some very good points in this uh, video. It's up to 20-something minutes now, so I think it's, it's time for me to stop. A lot of good stuff here. You could listen to this video um, more than once but until you begin to see. See, and you, you have to begin to relate your own circumstance. Oh, and then you can say, I see what happened, or I see where I'm reacting. And See, now you can perhaps see why the meditation is important too, that I have. The meditation um, is a, a simple way of beginning to return to the center of you, to your, to your intuition, to what you know in your heart, see, to, to, your, to conscience. See? And it begins with the soul. It begins at the soul level. Where your soul, see, if your soul has allegiance to the outside, see, your soul uh, see, eventually, through all your reactions, and of course you've been taught wrongly and so on, you see how you have developed an allegiance to the world? Not to God, but to the world. Or worldly authorities, worldly churches even. See? Worldly everything. It's where your allegiance is. You even see it with people's attention. They can't help it. P you, you hear about attention deficit disorder. Well, it has something to do with, our, with your attention, reacting to every little thing falling away from the mitigating um, um, sound instruction and control from within. Begins to, attention begins to be caught, up by, caught by everything. See? So you're, you, you must learn to return your allegiance see, to within. And therefore, you can learn to... Uh, be in the world, but not of the world. And you'll be able to start reacting less, less and less. More and more you will respond to principle which within, to conscience, to intuition within, less and less to extraneous circumstances, and you'll become your own person. You'll calm down, and it'll be good for your entire be being. My name is Rome.